Hello, my name is Vierde Hagelos and I work for the University of Antwerp, Belgium. This ILSA project video will give an overview on how to train the speech recognition for specific terms that might be needed in the interlingual context, such as the use of short forms and or docs or macros. We continue to build on what you have learned in the previous modules, that is, the modules on subtitling, on simultaneous interpreting, and on interlingual speaking. If you find that the speech recognition doesn't render a name or term correctly, you will have to find a way to help the system. All we speakers develop their own system and have their own preferences. Some we speakers will barely use their keyboard. Others use it quite often. The first group will choose to work with a macro or a tox method. Opting for this method means that you teach your speech recognition, for instance, that when you pronounce Tox Holland or Holland Mac, the name of François Hollande must appear in the written text, rather than the region known as Holland. You saw an example of this in the previous ILSA video. If you belong to the other group and like to work with your keyboard, you can also opt for a short form. Many subtitling programs allow you to make such a list of short forms. The system works in a similar way to the one using macros. For example, if you have prepared a list of short forms and your list contains the abbreviation FH linked to François Hollande, then the name of François Hollande will appear whenever you type FH and then press the spacebar. A word of caution. Do not use either macros or short forms too much and only use them for terms and names that often appear in your speech. It is also good practice to carefully consider, after a re-speaking session, which short forms and macros will remain useful for a next assignment and which ones have better to be removed. For example, if you have used a macro for the title of a book that was the subject of a presentation, talks book or book Mac, to become Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, it is best to remove that macro afterwards. That way you can use talks book or talks book Mac again for a subsequent speech about another book. If you find out in the course of an assignment that you have not added a given name to your lexicon, you have two options. Either try to bypass the name by, for example, mentioning the function of the person, for example, Donald Trump, President of the United States, or quickly type the name, running the risk that you spell the name incorrectly, of course. In this part, you'll be creating lists of words that might create confusion in the speech recognition software. Having done this and having created solutions, you need to check if every solution is working. This is generally accepted as a way to avoid language problems. Let's say that speakers' names are pronounced with an accent in the source language. In that case, you either have to train yourself to respeak those names in the way you would pronounce them, in the target language, or adapt your language model in a speech recognition model to accommodate the foreign pronunciation. Hereby an example, former President François Hollande came to Belgium for a visit in Dutch, without saying François Hollande, but typing the short form. Oud-president was op bezoek in België. Punt. I will show it once again. Oud-president was op bezoek in België. Punt.